I'm about to be ranking the best center from every NBA team. It's a position that's drastically changed yet quietly snuck up on us as one of the more deeply talented ones in the league. So stay tuned to find out who's the best man holding down the paint in the game today. Welcome to D-Flow Hoops. If you're new here and a passionate basketball fan craving for NBA content during the suspension, start now by subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss anything. Now let's get into it. Number 30, John Henson of the Detroit Pistons, who was the 14th pick from 2012's NBA draft and hasn't quite lived up to lottery pick expectations. What's interesting about him is he's right-handed, but every layup he attempts is with his left hand. He was traded from Cleveland to Detroit in the Drummond deal recently and in 40 combined games for the Cavs and Pistons. The 29-year-old standing at 6'9", but with a 7'6 wingspan, only produced five points and four rebounds, and shot just 50% from the free throw line. In my rankings of the best power forwards coming up, Detroit's got a young big I'm excited to break down, but unfortunately, Pistons fans, your best player at the center spot ranks last in the NBA. Number 29, Marquise Chris of the Golden State Warriors. He's typically known as a four-man, but after the dubs traded Willie Cauley-Stein to Dallas, Chris started 11 times at center for Golden State and played the rest of his minutes at the five spot. For his adequate production this past February, Marquise signed a new two-year contract with the Warriors. Chris was an impressive 16th league-wide in dunks, and while I think he has a ton of potential, at this point, other than his springy hops, his all-around game's underdeveloped. Number 28, Cody Zeller of the Charlotte Hornets. Michael Jordan didn't pay his center $56 million to barely have an impact and not develop defensively. I know Cody's having his best season offensively, and while 11-7 in 23 minutes isn't bad, but his game's not well-rounded enough for him to be considered anything close to elite. P.J. Washington's a damn intriguing stretch big who'll be the future of the position for Charlotte. The majority of P.J.'s minutes came at power forward. It's important he develops into the permanent five-man because Zeller's averageness isn't making Charlotte much better. Number 27, Wendell Carter Jr. of the Chicago Bulls. What's looking like one of the worst predictions I've ever made since starting this channel was saying Chicago got the steal in 2018's draft in this man Wendell. He rebounds well and still has potential, which puts him ahead of the players so far listed, but for now, he's slow guarding the perimeter and doesn't shoot the three ball well. Two things that significantly harm his value in the modern NBA. Number 26, Derek Favors of the New Orleans Pelicans, who'd fit nicely as a limited minute backup to vamp a contender's depth up front, but instead is tasked with starting in the Big Easy, as well as mentoring Pelicans rookie Jackson Hayes. Favors can catch and finish with the best of them at the rim. He had a game of 20 points and 20 boards this season. He stuck around through 10 seasons for a reason. For New Orleans, he's averaged around a double-double in just 24 minutes. Number 25, Thomas Bryant of the Washington Wizards. He missed over 20 games with a stress reaction in his foot. It was another season of progression, though, in the nation's capital for the explosive up-and-coming 22-year-old Thomas Bryant. Gotta see his feet move quicker laterally, but he's great at leaking out in transition offensively, and I think Bryant's got a chance to make the leap into one of the league's elite centers if he keeps improving. Number 24, Ivica Zubac of the Los Angeles Clippers. He's the fairly unknown Croatian in the middle amidst the team with four 18-plus per game scores, but the Clippers center is more valuable than you know him to be. Despite Zubac being a stocky seven-footer weighing in at 240 pounds, he's second among all centers in defensive real plus minus, and his rotations have been extremely solid on the back end for the Clippers. Number 23, Jarrett Allen of the Brooklyn Nets. Despite backing up DeAndre Jordan, BKN's backup five slightly edges out DJ as the Nets' best center. Allen plays four more minutes than DeAndre, but look to the per 36 minute stats, and you'll find Allen racks up 0.4 more blocks, more points, with Jordan only holding the edge in rebounds. Also, Allen hasn't come close to reaching his prime, and DeAndre's on the decline. Jarrett's hops make his potential unlimited, so I can't wait to see an improved version of him play off Uncle Drew in the snake next season. Number 22, Rashawn Holmes of the Sacramento Kings. Shooting the best field goal and free throw percentage, while averaging the most points out of any player ranked up to this point, Holmes has quietly broken out for the Sacramento Kings so far. Given his career highs across the board, losing him to a right shoulder injury in January was a massive blow to the Kings' playoff chances, but when he was healthy, Rashawn's hustle was big time for Sacktown. Number 21, P.J. Tucker of the Houston Rockets. The NBA's small ball renaissance has been signified in the Houston Rockets trading old school bigs Clint Capella and the Ney 
plus a first round pick to acquire Robert Covington. That's left P.J. Tucker to hold down the paint and essentially do every bit of dirty work while P.J. is one of the top league-wide defenders on the wing and an automatic three-point shooter from the corner. Him playing center when things get gritty in the playoffs seems unconventional. That's why he doesn't rank any higher. Number 20, DeAndre Ayton of the Phoenix Suns. Every injury from 2018's number one pick have been in his ankles with four separate injuries to them in this season alone. Ayton missed 35 of the Suns' 65 games, partly due to a banned substance suspension. He did put up 19 and 12 with about two blocks per game when he was on the floor, but let's see him stay on the floor and away from whatever substance he was suspended for. Number 19, Jonas Valanciunas of the Memphis Grizzlies. He's averaging career highs across the board, and I wanted to rank a player whose game I really respect in Valanciunas higher. Let's be honest though, his defense and three-point shooting still aren't close to elite, and there's other young talent at center who are simply better adjusted for the fast-paced nature of the game today. Number 18, Mitchell Robinson of the New York Knicks. Robinson's your ideal modern big defensively. With a wiry frame at seven feet, he's quick enough to hold down the most elusive of slashing big men while being capable of guarding the perimeter at times. Robinson led the league in blocks last season and was seventh right behind Gobert before the season suspension. On offense, he's second right in between Giannis and Gobert for league-wide dunks and comes up short in attempts but was on pace to qualify to set the league record in field goal percentage. For some reason, he only got 23 minutes though, which is why Robinson doesn't rank any higher, but next year's center ranking, you'll likely see the 22-year-old ranked a lot higher. Number 17, Daniel Tice of the Boston Celtics. In 10 games after the All-Star break, check out the beastly numbers from the versatile German protecting the paint in Beantown. Tice has been a fiend on the glass, a menace rolling to the basket while having passing and shooting ability for Boston in 2019-20. Number 16, Steven Adams of the Oklahoma City Thunder. OKC's maybe got the strongest player in the league in Steven Adams. Even though across most stat categories, the Kiwi had a down year, Adams slightly improved his block total and still can get it done at a 60% clip and get a bucket when you need him to with an extremely polished postgame. Number 15, Dwight Howard of the Los Angeles Lakers. A revamped Dwight didn't complain after building up an average of only 19 minutes and conversely became the second most valuable defender at his position in terms of defensive rating in that time frame. Superman was a problem not rolling but exploding in the pick and roll on the other side. Great to see Dwight Howard fully healthy. Number 14, Hassan Whiteside of the Portland Trailblazers. Great year from Hassan offensively, I was impressed. He's got some of the best catching and finishing down low in the league, but his defensive rating dropped off from a league best at center last year with the Heat to 12th this season in Portland. Plus, his team's been disappointing, so he doesn't rank any higher. Number 13, Chris Stapps Porzingis of the Dallas Mavericks. The package of hops and long-range finesse has typically like it has throughout the young phenom's career caused problems for defenders. However, a career low in field goal percentage and general rustiness Ranked Dallas is soon to be 25-year-old Latvian lower than you'd presume. At number 12 is Andre Drummond. He was traded to Cleveland for basically nothing. That and the fact that the best rebounder in the game ranks as the 12th best center just goes to show how deep this position's gotten. It also portrays how the league's now fully made its transition to beyond the top of the key, out to the perimeter. Drummond, despite being an efficient scorer and beastly rebounder, doesn't have the skills to be elite guarding the perimeter quite yet. On a contender, I still believe Andre can be a starter because he does have some valued qualities down low, and from 16 feet in at least, he's a pretty good defender. Number 11, LaMarcus Aldridge of the San Antonio Spurs. The Spurs veteran big man seemingly been around forever, and despite showing some signs that aging is regressing his value, LA is still killing teams nightly with tough, unforeseen daggers from distance. The Spurs roster needs help, Aldridge needs to be a third option at this point, but the losing's not the 34-year-old's fault. Number 10, Clint Capella of the Atlanta Hawks. Like Drummond, his impressive shot blocking and paint protection didn't impress front offices, and Clint was traded by the team that drafted him for not much in return. Clint never played for Atlanta due to a foot injury this year, but when he comes back, he and Trey Young are going to form a lethal pick and roll tandem. From Houston's perspective, trading this man was a big time mistake in my opinion, but similarly to Whiteside, Clint's defensive rating dramatically dropped off from last year.
but those three centers in Drummond, Whiteside, and Capella in another era could carve out legacies as all-time greats with their abilities, but in the 2020s, they'll get criticized for their lack of foot speed. Number 9, Brooke Lopez of the Milwaukee Bucks, who's first in defensive rating among centers, second in blocks, and for the second straight year is leading the NBA by a mile in the hustle stat shots contested. The 12-year veteran Lopez made a name for himself as an inside-and-out scorer as a New Jersey slash Brooklyn net, but in Milwaukee, Brooks' defensive energies reached heights I don't think anyone thought it had the potential to get to. Number 8, Nikola Vucevic of the Orlando Magic, the pride of Orlando. Vooch has been the Magic's leading scorer for four of the last six seasons. He re-signed with them on a four-year, $100 million deal last summer, but hasn't gotten complacent after getting paid whatsoever and dropped nearly 20 points and grabbed 11 boards per game. He's a league average defender, but has maybe the smoothest release from beyond the arc of any center ranked today. Number 7, Serge Ibaka of the Toronto Raptors. Having officially made the transition from a stretch 4 into a stretch 5 in the 6, a record set by Serge that I've mentioned before, but speaks to his versatility is the fact that the 2019-20 season saw him become the first player ever to record at least 1,500 blocks while having 500 threes. Serge's contract's up this offseason. He says he wants to stay in Toronto, and as a Raps fan, I'm praying they lock him up long term. Number 6, Miles Turner of the Indiana Pacers. It's the second straight year where Miles has been tops in blocks per game and led the Pacers into legitimate respectability. When you're watching Turner, you're witnessing the most elite rim protector in the NBA right now, but he'd rank higher if he could be more consistent and well-rounded offensively while grabbing more than six and a half rebounds. Number five, Bam Adebayo. Simply, this man holding down the paint in South Beach is the definition of that aforementioned well-rounded quality that Turner lacks. Bam's got a handle and attacks the rim with relentless prowess and while purely analyzing rim protection, Miles has the upper hand. Without a doubt, the best defender on the perimeter from centers is the menace that is Bam Adebayo. He put up over a steal and block per game, and the other end saw Bam develop into a passing wizard. Suddenly, he can find seams and defenses like a top facilitator at guard. What a well-rounded prodigy that the Heat have in Bam Adebayo. Number 4, Carl Anthony Towns the position's leading scorer with a staggeringly dominant stat line of 26 points, 11 boards, plus 4.5 dimes on brilliant shooting percentages. You could argue Cat should be higher than this, however, it's Towns scoring and rebounding that ranks him where he is. He's improved defensively, yet is still lacking big time in his lateral ability. Number 3, Nikola Jokic. Typically ahead of the pack in assists among centers, while being the third seeded Nuggets leader in three of five major stat categories. Joker's artistry in 2019 20 was at its peak. Denver could very well be the team of the future in the West. The offense runs through Jokic. If you're a Nuggets fan, you can credit a large amount of your squad success to him. Number two, Rudy Gobert of the Utah Jazz. He's the most hated player across the league right now. I've stated that's overblown because the virus was suspending the season anyway. More on that in my egos video that I just made. But we stay between the lines. A 7 foot 9 wingspan mixed with the fact that Gobert's polished his finishing inside every year makes Rudy a force to be reckoned with on both sides. In 35 minutes, he gives the Jazz 15 points on 70% shooting, 14 rebounds, and an upper class lengthy presence defensively that makes his team elite. Number one, Joel Embiid of the Philadelphia 76ers. He got a ton of flack in the biggest ego video I just previewed. Now Embiid gets his shine and ranks as the best big in the game. Even though he's down in points, rebounds, blocks, and assists from the previous season, either facing up or backing down in the post, Joel's still the most talented big man in the game. Plus, he's shooting his best three-point percentage since his rookie year. He can be better than he's playing, but the lack of spacing and Horford failing to complement Embiid's game in the Sixers' offense this season has made it tougher for him, but Embiid's bounced back nicely from his humbling moment after the Kawhi roll bounced in. The Sixers collectively are no doubt less of a threat without Jimmy Butler and J.J. Redick, but Joel's still holding down his reputation as all around the best center in the NBA, in my opinion. Thumbs up if you enjoyed. Subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss a single hot take prediction or story. Two shoutouts next video, so answer the question. I'm Adam. This was DFlow. Keep watching some of my recent uploads. You're going to love the content I've got coming up. So stay tuned, y'all. Appreciate everyone.